myself, I'm David uh, Duncan, and I work, uh, I've been primarily an ambassador, but I work on various parts of Fedora and making sure that people have, have been introduced to Fedora all the way around. And, um, and I am a partner solutions architect at Amazon, and I'm responsible for um, uh, our Red Hat Alliance specifically. And so obviously, um, I'm a former Red Hatter, so this is all all second nature to me to be um, to be involved deeply involved in in the Fedora mission and have been around really since Fedora Core. Uh, let's just say since Fedora Core, and let, let you know that that's a long time. So, um, and I and I love uh, you know have have been super happy about this community and being a part of this community for a long time. And so my mission when I came on board with, uh, as a, a member of the Red Hat Alliance team was to um, bring the development process that I had come to understand, know and love to the people who were, um, who were building uh, at AWS. But then I also wanted to make sure that we had strong customer access to Fedora and it needed to be simple. And I wanted to make sure that it was simple to find. And we had some goals in mind, like uh, around how customers could use uh, Fedora on AWS. And still, you know, those things are, uh, are emerging and everybody is finding new ways, obviously, to use it and, and uh, uh, to take advantage. And we wanted it to be mostly functional. And there's some people that I wanted to call out who have done some really great things over the past few years in terms of like making images available and have done lots of hard work. And 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 obviously this is not representative of the massive number of people who are involved, but I just want to say thank you to some of these people like Dusty and uh, Cyan who over the many years have been really amazing at getting out images on time and in a deliverable fashion and creating, you know, creating a, a, a clear pathway and pipeline to, to deployment. And some other people, uh, one of them you just heard from, uh, who is Samantro, who's done so much around testing uh, for, um, you know, making, making sure that there's uh, association with uh, the, the kernel testing for uh, cloud providers and, uh, and then uh, Michael for Cugino uh, for all the work that he has done around Fedora Core OS and um, and and getting that uh, ready for ready for market. So I just want to say that there's lots of people out there in the world who are doing great work around um, around deployment and testing that uh, that these images build, benefit from. And so what I've done um, is uh, tried to to work on something that. Uh, I think is really important, but ha at AWS was a little bit lacking because we didn't have any way to really highlight or showcase that uh, Fedora was available on AWS um, originally, and and the marketplace was the place where we wanted I wanted us to be able to do that, and um, building on the marketplace requires legal agreements be signed and. Matthew and I went back and forth. We've been doing this. Have we been doing this for four years? I think Matthew. Um, we've been working really hard on trying to figure out how it is that we can get this into a place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So sorry. <laughs> it's been a while, and so we've been trying to figure out what the legal requirement is, how how we could how we could get over that uh, get over the hump of that legal requirement. And and then beyond that, uh, so much of this was um, was just really about um, uh, making sure that we had the right thing in place. So the marketplace, I think, uh, makes the thing that makes it interesting is that it makes the product searchable. So lots of customers who wouldn't have normally come across um, Fedora as a part of their search for what what operating systems were available to them. Um, yeah, and you should have been a, a launch partner. So, so, but but what the uh, but we want you know it makes it searchable, it makes it possible for us to collect some metrics and to understand a lot more about uh, use patterns than we would know from just the community AMIs. The community AMIs are kind of you just let them go into the into the public, and people can use them, 
and they're advertised and uh, you know the, that's what the there's a, a bookmark uh, configuration on the on the get fedora um, pages for for the for the cloud images um, and and so it makes that makes it easy to use but it doesn't really tell you anything about yeah it doesn't tell you that the it doesn't tell uh, so to use Neil's words in his in his uh, unfortunate statement the, is it just by itself the public images don't tell a story about what what the use patterns are and we all know Matthew loves metrics so it's important to provide him with more information than he could possibly ever use so he can get that up onto slides and we can see it every year at Nest uh, or, or Flock hopefully. And um, and this is the this is one of those things that makes this uh, an important part of this process. But mostly, I think what makes the marketplace important is that it's discoverable by people who wouldn't have previously really understood that they had access to Fedora on AWS. Now, uh, on the on the other side, the metrics maestro. The the on the flip side. Um, there are some limitations to marketplace that are associated with commercial products that uh, that change the way that customers can use it. Right. So we have a lot of people who will like to use the, the standard community images because they're doing things like copying them over into their account and then using some other uh, modifications uh, on their own. Um, and how and now my the the first statement I want to make is like, how did we how did we get around all the obstacles? So, um, because we have been Matthew and I have been patiently vocal with the with the um, the leadership in the AWS marketplace, they started to really understand exactly what it was that that was missing from. Uh, all of our requests and the, all of all of their sort of simple requests in the past. There's some indemnity clauses that are very difficult and a lot of legal requirements that just are difficult for us to find ways around. And some of the work that we had done, we did was to to help AWS understand that we needed um, a publication model that was was not directly owned by uh, Fedora as such. And so they have created a model by which they can provide the images directly instead of um, instead of us having to uh, like as a instead I say us and I mean us Fedora having to sign um, a marketplace agreement specifically to get into the marketplace. So then they are providing the images uh, directly, and what and. And what what we've done is create the trademark approval, and the trademark approval is really critical. So um, that part makes it possible for, um, from the internal perspective, for me to say to teams that are shipping their own clients that are not yet packaged correctly for Fedora, to say, I'm sorry, you can't use uh, Fedora as a vehicle for your um, for your openly available but not openly uh, um, uh, developed software we you know you ha we'll have to work through the packaging process because the trademark guidelines prevent us from from uh, from from uh, muddying this image with other with other component parts so we leverage so we've leveraged that approval um, yeah exactly so, so now we've leveraged this this uh, approval so that we could have um, a pristine image, exactly like the image that's produced for, or that is a pass through to the image that's produced in the mar in the community directly in the AWS marketplace, and we get the advertising and we get the we get all of the component parts for that. Um, so, but that's not all. Um, there are other things that are going on here, and and this is a this has been a really great. Um, uh, catalyst for helping others in AWS understand how to how to leverage uh, the Fedora packaging model and 
uh, how to get us through to the the next work or, or the next level of supporting um, the you know the, the entire Red Hat ecosystem uh, and and the and and the community around it, right? So we have some nitro. We have a, a project called Nitro Enclaves that's going on right now, which allows for uh, a secure execution environment for specific code. Um, that team has been working in Rust, and we all know from what's you know what we've seen around trying to build Rust for a distribution that this is not an easy process. There's a lot of packages involved and a lot of people involved, and um, and the uh, that work has been ongoing. And one of the things that we've done to help them understand how to package software better for the community is to provide them with an understanding of how to use the COPA repositories for the uh, to determine whether or not they've got everything in place. And obviously, they have, you know, and that they have, um, uh, they understand that their requirements are to have access, permission, and an open source model for how they how they produce those packages. Um, the same thing with the EC2 Hibernate agent. You don't know it, but in uh, with respect to how we're working with the community there, we've uh, ended up making some really big SE Linux changes um, and uh, uh, like a, a domain change for uh, the ACPI requirements around swap files. Uh, we've made some huge leaps with uh, with the um, with community direct community involvement with engineers um, from the Fedora teams who are uh, part of doing some review on the way that uh, packet or the the way that block device storage has been um, handled for swap files, and so all of these things are going on in the background, uh, and this is and. And these utilities are there in in the copper repositories for people to see and use, and and uh, building. And we're trying to get a community like a culture of of um, pushing those changes into Fedora first, uh, rather than focusing in on and upstream, right? In in that very in that case, um, so so that's uh, that's really pushing. And uh, Russig uh, Ileana Weller. If you know her, she has been um, she's been around. And if anybody has more, like I'm happy to take questions here. I'm going to call that. We'll just call it Fedora on AWS. We want all the spin. I want all the spins, uh, you know that that can that can come over with us uh, to talk to me. I want to you know I want to get everything that we can do for Fedora on on this. So on on the on the marketplace through the same the same vehicle. Um, uh, yeah, and thanks, thanks. It is uh, a lot. This was a lot of legal hoops, and I think we 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 put a lot of time and effort into this. And Matthew, thank you so much for all of your help and all of your guidance. And um, you know, and the and there there are there were a lot of little pieces here in terms of of uh, knitting this together. Um, and, uh, let's see, I don't see any other questions. Anybody have any, um, yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely was, was close to, um, I don't know, Alexandra, I, I don't know what's going to help in terms of the Rust packaging, but I look forward to that. And we, like I said, Ileana is out there and, she is an amazing Rust resource, and I would love to to make sure that we're reaching out to her and making sure that she's a part of our of our program. And she's been around the Fedora team for a long time. But yeah, thank you. <laughs>